The Seychelles is an amazing country, an island just east of Madagascar. There's beautiful flora and fauna. It really feels like you're going back in time and looking at something like Jurassic Park. The Seychelles is also the protector of a UNESCO heritage site called Aldabra. Aldabra is an atoll, which means it's an island with an empty space in the middle. And every single day, water fills the space of the atoll, and at the end of the day, it moves out. As a result of this pattern of water moving in and water moving out, it produces some incredible artifacts. You'll see these stones that look like they came from another planet, carved out from millennia of water rubbing against them. You will find 100-year-old tortoises the size of Cadillacs walking around this space. It's really incredible. It's so rare, it's so vulnerable, it's not available for anyone to go to it. So the Seychellois, the citizenry of this place, take it upon themselves to protect this atoll, this UNESCO heritage site. The brief for the Aldabra House in Seychelles was to create a building that was to approximate an experience of what it might be like to be on the atoll of Aldabra, a place that you're not allowed to visit. So how do you create a building that brought all the magic of Aldabra but put it on the main island of Mahe? The Seychelles is located on the equator. And if you've ever been there, you'll know that the sun is critical to your experience. Unlike places like New York City, where we've got very, very low sun in the winter and very high sun in the summer, and it moves throughout the year, in the Seychelles, the sun sits on top of the island and it stays there all year round. So the way in which the sun impacts buildings really changes everything about the architecture there. Every building is defined really by how it deals with shade. Overhangs, overhangs, and overhangs which produce heavy, heavy contrast, which then requires lots of interior electrical lighting, which then creates a lot of dissonance in your eyes. You end up with high electrical bills. You end up with a very, very difficult time looking out of your windows. For us, the building had to be born of the environmental condition. We felt like if the building could deal with the Seychellois sun, then it would be of its place. So with incredible engineers and wonderful technological support, we set to create a facade that was literally generated specifically by the environment there. We looked at what's happening inside of the building, what are the solar needs of that space, and the facade responds. The louvers, every element of these locally sourced wood elements, the geometry, the orientation, the height, the size, the frequency, were all created by cross-referencing the functional needs and the path of the sun. So for example, if you're in a gallery space and you have to have very, very specific solar requirements, then there's an increase in the density of the louvers. If you then move into a public space and the south sun is hitting you, alas, the louvers change. So the building essentially was wrapped in one enormous sunshade, algorithmically tuned to each and every moment in the building. It's incredibly local. It's incredibly specific, and the facade defines your experience. Is there sun? Is there glare? Is there a view? Is there shadow? The approach to the building is, is very specific and quite subtle. As you cross the street, we move you up a thin ramp. And as you move under the ramp, you sort of slide under the building. On both sides, you are a series of louvers. On the left of you is the building, on the right of you is a screen. And the point here is that the facade of the building is the building. The way in which these louvers manage the solar radiation is how we manage your experience. So you move from this very shaded condition into a very large triple height atrium. And in this space, you're given a glimpse of the water beyond. So as we move you through this gallery, there's moments where we bring you inside a very tight, six-sided, climate-controlled, high-tech space. Other moments, the doors open and you experience the humidity, the wind, and the sound of the Seychelles. And unlike most museums, we take advantage of our climate and take you from inside to outside, from up to down. Now that logic of trying to bring the, the Aldabran culture, the Aldabran environment into this building extended to the curatorial logic as well. When you're at grade, the exhibitions talk about the animals and creatures that are actually existing at level and grade. When you move up, we take you into the canopy. There you learn about creatures that fly, that climb. 
all to bring the experience and the content and the flavor of Aldabra into this building. But then ultimately, once we've immersed you in the content and the biology and the history of the atoll, you walk out the back of the building and you experience what is so unique to this part of the world, the mangroves. And moving throughout the mangroves are these giant tortoises. So you exit out of the back of the museum, you walk along a series of plankways that are all inspired by the shell of these giant tortoises. So in a sense, it's a kind of experiential museum that speaks through the history of the atoll. If you're not dealing with the sun, you're not in Aldabra. And as a result of it, this building is designed from and by the Aldabran sun. It can't go anywhere else. Its geometry, its form, its pattern, its texture, it speaks of its place and it functions only in that place.